We've seen how the parks were important for leisure activities, but there were other forms of entertainment which were just as important. A theatre called the New Theatre existed in Blackburn as early as 1787. The Theatre Royal was erected in Ainsworth Street about 1816 to replace it. This would be approximately where T.J. Hughes is now. It became a cinema on August the 24th, 1931, also known as the Theatre Royal. A new purpose-built cinema was erected on the site and it reopened as the Cinema Royal on May the 23rd, 1938. The first film shown was Firefly, starring Jeanette MacDonald. The cinema closed in March 1967 to be demolished to make way for the new town centre development. Another cinema was the Palace, situated on Blackburn Boulevard. It was originally built in 1899 as a theatre and as such it closed down in 1932. From 1936 until 1984 it was a cinema at irregular intervals before finally closing and being demolished in 1984. The two previous cinemas mentioned have gone, but one still survives. The Apollo 5 cinema has a chequered history, but originally this building played a very important role in Blackburn's daily life. It was the Cotton Exchange which opened in 1865, its primary function being to provide a weekly meeting place for those engaged in the cotton business. Charles Dickens gave a public reading here, and the famous composer and military bandleader de Souza gave two concerts in the building. By the early 20th century, it was a multi-purpose building and showed films from time to time. At the end of the First World War, it was known as the Exchange Hall Cinema. Entertainment of another kind is provided at King George's Hall. The foundation stone was laid by King George V in 1913. The building presents a conventionally classical appearance, being faced with stone and with a giant portico. There are three halls and it ranks as one of the area's top entertainment venues, attracting big names and quality concerts. The building is a good example of early 20th century civic pride. Blackburn's most famous star from the music world was the singer Kathleen Ferrier. She lived until she was 22 years old at 57 Linwood Road. Kathleen was the youngest of three children and she was born on April the 22nd, 1912. She was educated at Blackburn High School and was brought up in a family that loved music. By the end of the Second World War she'd become a well-known singer in Britain and this led to international appearances. Tragically she died of cancer on October the 8th, 1953. Opposite King George's Hall is the public library. Blackburn's first public library was in an upper room in the Town Hall, followed by a small library in the exchange rooms on Town Hall Street. A new library was built in 1874 in the street now called Museum Street, and the building now is the town's museum. It's embellished with the heraldic bearings of the ancient lords of the manor, the de Blackburns, and the arms and crest of the Fieldons. Four panels on Richmond Terrace represent agriculture, the manufacture of cotton, the manufacture of iron, and commerce. Whilst three sculptured panels on Museum Street illustrate art, literature and science. The library opened to the public in 1874 and moved to larger premises, the old co-op building in 1975, ironically back to Town Hall Street. The museum houses a very famous collection which was given to the town by Edward Hart who lived from 1878 to 1946. He didn't marry and he resided with his mother and sister at Brooklands West Park Road. In 1946 he bequeathed his collection of some 6,000 classical and British coins and printed books to Blackburn along with sufficient funds for them to be displayed in the museum. The Hart Gallery was opened on October the 28th, 1985 by Edward's cousin, Canon Kendrick Hart. He also made an anonymous contribution of £30,000 for the purchase of Witten Park from the Fielden family in 1946. Blackburn has had one or two well-known authors over the years. 
the current popular writer, Josephine Cox, used to live in the town. But even more associated with Blackburn was the author Dorothy Whipple. She was born at number 9 Edgware Road on February the 26th, 1893. Dorothy's first book, Young Anne, was published in 1924. Her bestseller, They Were Sisters, was made into a film, and Because of the Lockwoods was made into a radio play. Dorothy Whipple died in September 1966.